when you manage foreign bodies, I advise you to use common sense and your own experience or experience of your peers or your hospital. Because if you look at the guidelines, these are based on reviews of uh, articles and logically there is not going to be many prospective studies or randomized studies, very few observational studies. And you see that most data that was reviewed to do this evidence was low quality evidence and there is lots of recommendations. So be wary of uh, those because you will see that sometimes your experience is more valuable the guidelines that may not apply to your hospital or to your location. Because sometimes the guidelines say that you need to wait up to 24 hours uh, with specific sizes, as I will show you, but we have had experience that even those sizes that are mentioned in the guidelines, they pass through the pylorus and are found in the jejunum and then they cause problems. So the risk factors for accidental ingestion are as I mentioned before, impaired tactile sensation, for example, with dentures, sometimes compromised judgment, occupational hazard. Lots of people place stuff in their mouth when they are working, nails, uh, roofers, for example, or tailors or carpenters. Uh, I have removed some nails from carpenters. They, they swallow them accidentally while they were working. <coughs> in children, it's mostly unintentional that they ingest foreign bodies and there is a large amount of intentional ingestion of foreign bodies that you will see in your practice <clears throat> specifically patients who have a psychiatric problems but also prisoners so these they are trying to get a secondary gain by ingesting the foreign body and sometimes there is iatrogenic foreign bodies for example we have had patients where we have placed a stent and then it uh, got dislodged in the esophagus and went into the stomach and we had to remove it <clears throat> or you're doing a resection and then the cap falls off the tip of the endoscope etc. <clears throat> so the literature says that most of the foreign bodies will pass but here I caution you go back one step and look at what foreign body is in your patient or maybe in your patient because this percentage in my opinion is too high and there is not enough data showing that so many foreign bodies pass, otherwise we would not be so busy in the emergency room removing them. <clears throat> Most uh, need endoscopy when uh, we need to remove them, rarely surgery, but as I mentioned before, it's important to have your surgeon available if there is a sharp foreign body, for example. Most complications that occur, of course, are perforation, obstruction, but sometimes there can be penetration into vessels, as I will show you from some cases. Sharp objects are very dangerous and one needs to deal fast. Patients who have ingested a foreign body can have a large variety of symptoms with food bolus, it's certainly dysphagia, inability to handle secretions, but some children who swallowed coins have similar problems. We need to be very specific and ask when the symptoms began. And other complications, of course, include aspiration, but also when patients have ingested sharp foreign bodies or fish or meat bones. <clears throat> Nowadays, there are CTs all over the place, computer tomography, and sometimes going to computer tomography will be the safest uh, approach. Nonetheless, with coins and batteries, doing a quick x-ray will certainly be very useful for you to do the road mapping, the planning of your endoscopy.